Let's talk about args and keyword arguments in Python. So you may have seen something like this before, where we have a function and we passed in star args and star star quarks. And you may be wondering what this is. So let's go over what exactly is happening here. So I made some notes here um, of what these things are. Star args is a pos positional argument collector. And so it collects all the positional arguments after the already defined positional arguments. If this part doesn't make sense, don't worry about it too much. We will get into an example that hopefully will clear that up. Um, but this will look like most of your typical arguments you've probably seen before. You pass in a name, another name, and you call them and you put variables in these positions. And then the first variable you put in will be saved in var1, the second one saved in var2, and the third one saved in var3. So the order matters in this case. Keyword arguments, star star quarks, is a keyword argument collector. And it works the same way, except you have keyword arguments where you have a, a name and you set it equal to a value. Another name and set that equal to a value. So these key value pairs. And then you can do something, you know, like quarks.get and then any keyword name here and it gets that value. And so in this case, the order, order doesn't really matter. What matters is the key and value pairs you pass in. So that's what these things are. Let's go over some examples about how these actually work. So we'll start by just creating a simple function. So this will be a lot like things you've seen before, hopefully. Um, we'll create a function with def, and then we'll do my func, I guess, my function. And then we'll pass in any sort of variable name. We'll call this hello underscore world. And then we'll go ahead and just print um, hello world. And so when we call this function, we can call it with just my function and then pass in a string. In this case, we'll pass in hello world um, or any, you don't have to pass a string in, but any sort of variable. Any sort of data there we can pass in we save it and it will print it out to our console so over here i have my terminal up and running let's pull that over here and if i run python 3 and this is called tutorial.py um, you'll see that it's it runs hello world it prints it to the console now let's go ahead and change this up a little bit so instead of of having hello world as our argument let's pass in star args as our argument and we'll print out args and notice here, we're not putting the star down here. We're putting just args. We save that. And then we come back to run it again. And we run troll again. You'll see now we print out hello world. But we need to grab the position that it's in. So in this case, we can grab star or, or grab args of zero. And then we come back here. We run that again. And then you get our, our argument in the first index here, which happens to be uh, hello world. Okay, perfect. So that is how you can set up these arguments and it collects all of the arguments. So if we want to put more than one argument, um, so let's go ahead and split this up into two different arguments. Uh, we can do hello and then put world as a separate argument. And then down here we can print, I'm actually I'll put it in the same line here. I'll print out args and args and the one position as well. And I'll come back here, I'll run this again. And you'll see now we get hello world once again. Okay, and so that is kind of how positional arguments work. Um, but in this last part here, you notice that we said uh, collects all positional arguments after the already defined positional arguments. So we can still define other arguments here in front. We'll do var1 and var2. And now if we add some other things here, uh, we add um, a, b, c, uh, d, e, f, like that, and we print this out, you know, what are we gonna get? Well, when we print this out, we still just get hello world. Well, why is that? That's because these two positional arguments are being set uh, to these two values. And these are not included in our collector because we've already defined them separately. And so only the hello world is coming back. If we came under here and then we printed out uh, var1 comma var2, and then we come back here and we print that out, that out, we get the a, b, c, d, e, f. So they're saved separately. So we don't combine them all. They're not all in here, but just the ones not already defined. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It's just any additional positional arguments after the already defined positional arguments, in this case, var1 and var2. Let's go ahead and take a look at keyword arguments now and some examples there. So if we go to def and we create my function 2, we'll say, and we'll pass in star star quarks. And then down here, we'll go ahead and print quarks. And let's take a look and see what we get. So we call this function my function two, and we pass in um, some keyword arguments. So we'll do hello equals world. And now let's go ahead and uncomment out this function call just so we keep our terminal a little cleaner. Um, and I'll go ahead and clear this out here. Now we run this file again. We get a dictionary with the key of hello and a value of world. And so we can use that like any other dictionary. So we can print quarks 
dot get and then pass in the key. In this case, the key is hello. Hello. And then we come back here and we run this. And what we get, we get world. So we can pull out arguments that way. And if the argument happens to not exist, it will just return none. So we change that to h equals world. Um, hello no longer exists in that dictionary. So we run this, we just get back none. So this works the same way as args, except now we're working with keyword arguments. So if we were to pass in a positional argument beforehand, var1, and then quarks, and then we were to print out um, just quarks in total, see what we get. Um, we're getting one uh, an error here, missing one required positional argument. That's because I forgot to pass in a value for our argument. So in this case, since we're defining this this way, um, we need to have arguments there. There's no way of leaving that blank. Um, so we have to put some text there. I would put whatever, just like that. And then I'll change this back to hello as well. And now we run this. And we get our hello world. We don't get our positional argument because this does not collect... Um, anything already defined, but also does not collect any um, positional arguments at all, only keyword arguments. Now let's go ahead and put an additional keyword argument in this function here. So we'll just do a text equaling uh, test. We'll save that. Now we run this file again. You notice we get text test hello world. So we get both keys because it collects everything not already defined. Let's say we want to go ahead and take away this key here and move it up here. So now we're putting an additional keyword argument up in our function. And as you can probably guess, this will not be collected inside of quarks because we're defining this separately. So now if we come back here and we run this function again to print out the quarks, we only get hello world because once again, this does not collect all keyword arguments, but only ones not defined before it. Now, a couple here things just to make sure we, we make clear. Um, putting keyword arguments before positional arguments, so we did another test equals whatever here. Um, this is not going to work. Um, you cannot put positional arguments in front of, or you cannot put keyword arguments in front of positional arguments. Um, you'll see non default argument follows default argument. Um, so you don't want to make, you want to make sure you don't do that. Um, and you also have to be careful about putting things after quarks. So I add another var variable here, var2. And I came down here and tried to define something else after it. Um, you will get another error saying invalid syntax. So make sure when you write these functions, if I go ahead and undo all these changes that are messing it up, make sure you follow the same pattern where you have star args, and then after that, star star quarks, and that's at the very end. So if you do use this, make sure this is set like this, star args, and then star star quarks at the very end of any other variables you're setting. Um, that's very important, otherwise you'll get some weird errors. Um, so just make sure to avoid any issues. That is how you're writing your functions using these two uh, keywords. Okay, so that's a, good, a quick overview on how exactly these things work. Um, but you may be asking, what exactly would you use this for? So let's go over a quick example of what this could be used for. And so what I kind of want to talk about here is using a variable number of arguments. So we're going to focus just on star args here not on star star quarks. And we're going to look at taking any number of numbers and adding them all together. So I'm going to comment that out for now. We'll come down here and we'll create a new function, def add numbers. And so I want to be able to add up all numbers passed into this function, no matter how many arguments are passed in. So what I'll do here, I'll put just star args and nothing else. Inside this function body here, I will do for number in args and we'll go ahead and add this to a total. So above this, I'll put total equals zero. And now inside of this function here, or inside this loop here, we'll do total equals total plus number. And this will just take our previous total and add up the, the current number in our loop inside of whatever arguments are passed into this function. And now we can go ahead and kind of make this a little more concise by instead of doing total plus number, doing total plus equals, plus equals number. And that's just kind of a more concise way of doing the same thing, but it means total plus or total equals total plus number. Uh, it does the exact same thing. And now here at the very end, we'll just go ahead and do a return total. And that should return our total um, after it's all added together. Let's go ahead and call this function now. So we'll do add numbers and we'll pass in just one, two, and three. So if you take one, two, and three and add them together, it should get six. We save this, we come back here to our terminal, just clear this up for now and make it a little easier. 
we run this. Oh, I forgot to print it out. Let's make sure we print this out. Uh, we'll print add numbers. If we print add numbers, come back here and we run this, uh, we get six. So we took all of uh, these numbers and we added them together and returned that total and printed it out. So we did it with three uh, arguments, but we did not define three separate arguments in separate function. We just used star args and we looped over star args. So we can go ahead and add a bunch more numbers if we wanted to. We can add as many as we want. It doesn't really matter. It will still work. And it still adds all this together. We can also add as few as we want. So we can add just two. And we run that and it still works. And it's three. We can go ahead and just add up together one. And it just returns one. So it allows us to kind of not have to set the number of numbers we're adding and just kind of do a variable and then just and just kind of have it be whatever, uh, any number of numbers, and then it will just add those together down in here. So it's a way to kind of do things like that. If you don't know the number of arguments being passed in, um, you can use star args to take any number of them and just loop over them. So that was just a kind of a basic example, but hopefully it kind of shows how these things can be used. And we can use star star quarks in similar, a similar way. I'm not going to go through a really example here, but but you can go ahead and play around with that on your own if you want to see um, how that would work. But it's just a dictionary, so you can go through and, and manipulate the dictionary in any way you normally would. Um, but that is it for this video. I hope this was helpful in understanding how args and keyword arguments work in Python. The code will be in the description below, as well as the documentation, if this is something you want to read into more. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.